Hey everybody, this is Jim the Tabletop Engineer and welcome to a new playthrough video. Today I am going to be playing five parsecs from home. This is the eighth turn, so this is battle number eight. I rolled up the conditions and the enemy in the previous video, so if you haven't watched that, you might want to go back and familiarize yourself with it. Uh, I'm going to be going up against a crew of six salvagers. Four of them are just standard crew thugs. There is one specialist and there is one lieutenant. I am bringing six of my best characters. I hate to keep doing that. I want the other two to get some experience and level up, but I really feel like I need my best on the table today. Um, one role I need to make right now is uh, there is a priority target. So what I've done is I've numbered one, two, three, four, specialist is five, Lieutenant is six. Let me roll this die and see which one of them is the priority. That is a one. So I'll just select one of the uh, thug characters uh, when they move out. You can't see them right now. They're tucked behind this building, just like my crew is tucked behind this building. I've sort of made it symmetrical. Uh, the goal here is secure. It means I need to get all of my crew within two inches of this center point here and there cannot be an enemy within six inches of a crew member and I have to hold this spot for two consecutive rounds if I do that I win the objective however if I hold the field which basically means kill all the crew or run them off uh, I can do this at my leisure so I would not only hold the field but I would also secure my objective there is not a time limit on the secure so that gives me a little bit of breathing room so really what I want to do is I want to get my crew into the best firing positions. Um, the problem is there is a limited line of sight. In the last video I rolled the conditions of the battle and it was poor visibility, which means maximum 11 inches line of sight. So I, I guess maybe it's a fog or a rain, but whatever the reason, uh, an enemy must be within 11 inches to uh, shoot at me. So that kind of evens evens the playing field uh, somewhat. Uh, most of the bad guys are using colony rifles, which are just single shot. Most of my crew, with the exception of one or two, are using double shot, two shot uh, uh, guns. But their, um, their specialist has a rattle gun and the lieutenant has a marksman rifle. Now the marksman rifle traditionally has a range of 36 inches, but again, limited to 11. So he's gonna have to get in close if he wants to use that. The downside to this particular enemy is they are of the cautious nature. Cautious nature means they do not want to get into a brawl, so they're not gonna, they're gonna try not to come into base-to-base -base contact with me. Uh, they always wanna stay in cover as much as possible. Uh, they wanna shoot from cover, which that's typical of most crews, including mine, um, but they also aim they will stay in cover and aim, which means they get to reroll uh, ones on a die. So let's get going with this. I've got my crew sheet printed out. I've got my cheat sheet uh, board with all the stats and stuff here. Um, and I think I am ready to go. So let me pull out the dice here so I can roll a few things. Now before the game begins, I get a chance to see if I seize the initiative which basically gives me an extra move. Um, because of the limited, I can't fire and there's no targets visible, so it's really an extra move action. So to do this, you roll 2d6 and you add the highest savvy score, which the highest savvy I have is my robot six, who has plus two. It's funny that a robot has savvy, but whatever. Plus two, and um, I'm looking for a 10 or higher. Uh, I would add plus one if I'm outnumbered. I am not, and I'm not higher. I'm not uh, fighting against hard muscles. So, just a straight shot. I, I get to add two, so I'm looking for an eight or higher. I rolled a three, so I do not seize the initiative. Can you guys see the dice? Yeah. 
Um, all right, so no CZ initiative. So on turn one, I am basically going to roll a D6. I've got six of them here for six crew, but I roll one D6 for each of my crew. And I'm going to be assigning ones and twos based on the crew member's agility. Uh, I rolled a single two. I am learning pretty quick that I think sometimes it's best to move in the slow phase, but we'll see. So the only two, I the only agility two that I have, or reaction, excuse me, the reaction two belongs to either Vey, Captain Bannis, or Six. So I'm going to give it to Vey. He's my crack shot. So I'll give it to Vey and he will move in the fast phase. So what he's going to do is he has a movement of five and then he, he's gonna sprint so he can add two. <coughs> so he can move a total of seven. What I want him to do is he's gonna, I want him over here, guarding the central point, looking at this back here to see if they're gonna flank us, try to flank us, and uh, we'll, we'll see how that works. So I just, I lined him up. I didn't know what this was gonna be. So he's gonna move a full seven which puts him right here, and that is the end of the fast phase. Next is the enemy phase. This is where they get to move. Now, all of the enemies have a move of four. They can also sprint, so they will move up to six if they need to. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to move the microphone because I'm going to go around here. And what I'm going to do here is play this. I, you know, I'm trying to, I need to put them all behind the building. Uh, I want to play this as um, a legitimate you know, crew that wants to stay alive. So I think because they're cautious, they are going to stay together and their lieutenant is going to try to get them into cover. He recognizes, now I'm playing this as if I were their control, like if I was playing an opponent. Um, obviously what I want to do here, I know the limit on the visibility. So I want to get my guys into position just like I want my crew to. So the lieutenant, is I, he's going to go first. He can move a total of six. He's going to move right here behind these stairs. And he's going to tell three, two to come with him, and he'll send the other two to flank. So these will go six, and this one will go six. So I don't think I don't know if the video is going to show, but there are three right here behind this staircase, and then the other three are right drop down here. I'm going to send them to the corner of this building, and they're just going to stop. They're they're going to try to sneak around, um, and we will see if that works out for them. Now, if I were playing an opponent, I would obviously see this guy making a move. So. Um, they, they got a glimpse, I guess, maybe through the stairs or whatever, they saw movement. So the rest of my crew is gonna go. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to use line of sight and angle to my benefit here. Um, knowing where they're going, they're trying to get over here, I think behind this, um, I'm calling it the Atmos scrubber. Um, they're trying to get here and get some cover. So I think what I'm gonna do is try and sneak my guys behind this right here, or at least get them in here. We'll see how that goes out, how that goes. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm not even gonna track their dice because they're not gonna be within 11 inches of the enemy, so I don't need to worry about tracking that. So for, for right now, I'm just gonna move, um, let's see, uh, Blue Eyes has a movement of four, so he can move six. And he will move here. And next is Captain. Captain has a speed of four, so he will also move six. And finally, Huala has a speed of five, so he can move seven. So he's gonna get right beside this guy. And there is no line of sight because of this right here. Now my last two characters, I want them to get in here and try to get some cover. Um, Freak has a speed of four, so he can move Let's see, he's going to go one, and then he'll go five, which will put him right about there. I'm going to curve him in. He's trying to get in here to get cover. Now, he can, he can he, well, no, he can't really see them. Line of sight, visibility is poor. He doesn't see them over there. Uh, the robot is also going to do the exact same thing. He's just following right behind Freak here. And let me see, can you... 
I, I apologize for the video. I've been thinking about getting a top down uh, uh, camera to do this, and I may still work on that. But right now I've got two here, three over here, three enemy there, three enemy there, and my guys here. All right, that is the end of the slow phase. No morale roll because nobody has been knocked out of the game yet, enemy wise. So now it's initiative. I rolled a one and a two. So I'm going to assign those. Once again, I'm going to give they the two. And I'm going to give one. I'm going to give that to. I'm going to give it to Freak. Let me see. Freak sees the Atmo thing. So if he could get within 11, he might be able to take a shot. He could. I'm going to give it to Freak. He's going to move right here into cover. He's going to tuck in behind this uh, behind this crate, and he is done. And Vey is going to move his full seven over here, which puts him behind this Atmo scrubber right here, and he is moved. And that is it for the fast phase. Now, time for the enemies. All right. I really haven't changed my mind. I do want to get these guys into cover. So the lieutenant has a move of six, which will get him right here. As a matter of fact, if he goes right there, nope, he's still protected. And then these other two are following him. And they're just going to stay right here. Um, even though he had line of sight to 11, 11's right here. So he would not have seen them, or they were definitely out of range. Now these three over here, they're going to try to get closer, closer in. So they can move a total of six, which puts him right there, and the other two will be right behind him. All right, now remember, they want to stay in cover. So for right now, this is going pretty quickly just because no one can shoot. They're all out of range. So. Now it is the slow phase, which means my guys can get moving where they need to. Um, I am going to have Blue Eyes, who has a movement of four. He can move six, but if he moves four, that puts him here. And he can actually see the lieutenant, but he will have no cover, and the lieutenant will have cover. So that's not going to work for me. So I'm going to get him closer. He's going to go full six, which puts him right behind this grav wave generator. Captain is going to do the exact same thing. He can move six inches, so he's right here. And Huala can move a full seven, so he's just going to get right here, guarding this side. And what else? Uh, six. I'm going to run six up. Well, if I run him up here, he's going to be have no cover with these guys. He sees this opening, and he's like, well, that's not... He wants to get in here, too. So he's going to get in here behind the crates uh, for cover. The crates are full size. Uh, they block full cover, so they will actually... Except for uh, except for um, Freak, he's got a path back here. But Six has no line of sight. He'll have to step around, but temporarily he's, he's blocked. He, nobody could fire at him because of the size of this. And that is it for the slow phase. <laughs> so once again, it is time for me to roll initiative. There's no morale rolls yet. I could really use some ones and twos. I got a single one and a single two. So I, I'm gonna have they, I'm gonna give him the two, and I'm gonna give the one, two, My captain has a shell gun, and if he can, if he could get wind of where they are, roughly, he could fire, and that would really be, that would be a really nice thing. Um, let me think about that. I'm not gonna. Well, he needs he needs eyes on, which means I'm gonna have to put one of my crew into harm's way. I could run Huala out here and he would get a glimpse and be able to tell the captain, but I could also send him over here into cover. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give it to Huala. So, 
Walla is going to move around to the side and he's going to peer around and yes he can see the enemy but he's not going to be able to fire because if I wanted to fire I need to move one more inch and that will expose me with no cover so he's going to stay in cover he he could technically move and then duck back in that's how he did it so he sees these guys back here and he relays that information to the captain now they six can see just the corner here so he he but it well line of sight he couldn't they is going to take a chance and try to get over here and that's where it's going to happen as soon as he steps around the corner he's still got line of sight and he's still in cover but he can see there are three guys down here now they has a two shooter two shots but there are three of them and i really don't want to lose they but they has got good toughness good speed good combat and I need to take advantage of that. Um, he's also carrying a weapon that does what's called critical, which I'll have to look that up, but I seem to recall that if I roll a six for a hit, let me look that up real quick. I always forget that one. Uh, critical is a natural six on the hit roll inflicts two hits. So that's a nice thing. All right, I'm going to do it. Bay runs around the corner and he sees two. And he's going to maintain cover, but he can see three of them in the open. So he's going to take two shots. He's going to take a shot first at the first one. And the way this works is, let me get back to the combat here, um, page. If you have the book, by the way, I'm going to be running off the cheat sheet on page 118. It's just a summary of combat. So I'm going to roll a d6, and I'm going to... Um, I'm going to... Uh, add my combat skill which is plus two so I'm firing at this first one and remember he's he's in the open but he's greater than six inches away so I need a five or higher five or higher but he's plus two so I need a three or higher to hit and he's firing twice so I rolled a five so the first shot hit now they have no armor but their toughness is four so since I hit I roll a d6, I add the damage rating of the weapon, which is zero. Um, the target is eliminated on a natural six, or if the modified score equals or exceeds their toughness. So their toughness is four, I get no modifier to this die. So I need to roll a, what is it, four or higher. And I rolled a four. So it did get through his toughness and that knocks him out. So one enemy is gone. He'll take his second shot at the next one. Again, I need a, I needed a five, let's see, I need a three or higher. I rolled a natural six. So remember, that's critical. That means I get two chances to get through his toughness because it's treated as two hits. So the first hit, I just need a four or higher to defeat him. I rolled a three, so that failed. Second hit, I rolled a six. So that is enough to knock him out. And that ends Vey's chances of eliminating. <laughs> that ends his turn. So it is now the enemy phase. Let me go ahead and resolve this. That one right there is, and by the way, I forgot to do this. Let me do this. Um, there are two thugs left. Of the two that are eliminated, those were not my priority targets. That would be cheating, <laughs> sort of, if I said, oh, I knocked out one. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six to see which one's the priority target. And I rolled a two, so this is my priority target. I get an extra credit if I eliminate him. Um, he is going to fire with a colony rifle. The colony rifle uh, has just one shot, no damage modifier. So he's going to roll a d6 and he gets no combat modifier. Actually, that's not true. That's not true. He gets plus one because the, the priority target has plus one, was it plus one toughness or plus one combat? It was plus one tough. That was it. Plus one tough. All right. So he needs just a, I'm within, well, I'm in cover. So he needs an, he needs an actual six or higher. And I rolled a three, so he missed. And he is gone. Uh, these guys over here, all right, let me play this as if that was me. So I told you 
Koala stepped out and spotted them. They know they've been, I know I've been spotted. Now, playing my opponent, I don't know what weapons he has. I don't know about that shell gun. So probably what I'm gonna do is tighten things up a little bit and get out of, get, get into cover. I may even retreat a little bit. All right, so I know that he's got three guys back here because I'm playing, I watched three guys. I've got three to three and it's my turn to go. Now I could rush and shoot, but remember they're cautious. They want to stay hidden and they only want to shoot if they see, if they, if they know they can hit. Now the lieutenant can't see my guy because he pulled back in, but he, he moved enough that he could spot him. So the question is, do they stay here and wait to see if they get charged or do they maybe move over here behind the staircase? I'm gonna say the lieutenant is going to flee back behind the staircase to direct to direct the, the his crew and he's gonna tell these guys to tighten it up so they're gonna they're gonna get in here close to actually this is my commander sorry this is the specialist um, which means that single guy right there is my only other thug okay so I've got a specialist here a thug here and the and the commander or the lieutenant is watching right here he moved out uh, freak saw the movement maybe not really that was more than 11 inches golly this is really okay so I think what they're gonna do is they're gonna wait for me to make the charge which kind of makes sense I mean they're cautious they whatever reason they don't want me to reach this center but they're also not willing to risk their lives for it so yeah I'm gonna leave that as is he already fired they moved that is the end of the enemy phase so now it is the slow phase <sighs> all right the captain could run out here and he'll be in range to put a shell gun shot right here which I think is what he's gonna try to do captain can move four now I'm taking a big risk here because he's gonna move his maximum distance which means he's not gonna fire this turn so I'm hoping for initiative next turn he can move six, which will put him right here. That does put him in the open, but it's not the enemy phase right now. It's my my turn. So, wow. Uh, <laughs> six would put him right out there in the open, which I'm going to take the risk. I'm going to put the captain out here. He sees at least one enemy here. He also can spot the lieutenant, so he might... We'll see how he's gonna play that one. Next, Red Eyes is going to, all right, so Huala moved, Captain moved. Next is Red Eyes. Red Eyes is going to step out. He can see the Lieutenant within 11. He's in cover, I'm in cover, but he's gonna take a chance. Blue Eyes has an auto rifle, which gets two shots. His combat is plus one. Because he's in cover, that means I need to roll a six, but I've got plus one, so a five or six will hit. A two misses, I'm gonna take the second shot, and a two misses, so he he is done. Um, Snake, my freak, is two. He might, he could, he could. Snake, ha or freak has a two shot also. I'm gonna rule that Snake rushes slithers forward from behind cover into range and he's going to shoot at the he's going to shoot at the lieutenant as well so he's plus he's plus zero combat so i need a natural six and i rolled a one three and a two so i missed so he is done uh i'm gonna send six can move four plus two he'll go out to and then up four, he's within range of the center console, so that, that's partially, so is the captain. And that is the end of, they've all moved. Bay went, so all my guys have moved. All right, now comes the big roll. I need some initiatives, <coughs> some ones and twos. Come on. I got three twos, that should help. I'm going to give one to Vey, obviously, 
One is going to go to the captain, who has a reaction of two. And the other two can only go to... They can only go to six. So, uh, six, Vey, and Captain. All right, Vey is going to fire at this remaining guy right here, uh, as, as usual. You know what? He may move in close to get that bonus. That's what he's going to do. He's going to charge. So, he's within. He's under six inches. So, at three or higher, he gets plus two. So, as long as I don't roll a one, is a one, a, I think a one is a natural miss. Did it ever say that? Suffer additional hammer. Okay. I don't know if in this game a natural one actually resolving hits. Resolving two hit. Uh, within weapons cover, watch where you point that thing. If the modified score is equal to or the missed shots have no effect. It doesn't say that a one is like a critical miss. So I'm going to hit because he's within range. He's got plus two. And all I need to do is roll a three. So let me see what happens. But I could get a six, which will give two hits. I rolled a five plus two is seven, so it definitely hits. Now, does it go through his toughness? Let's see. I rolled a three, it does not. They, oh wait, that was one, sh one shot. He'll take his second shot. Did I already roll that? No, I didn't. All right, second shot, he needs a, he just needs a, uh, he hit, one plus two is three, and now he needs a, four or higher, and I rolled a natural one. <laughs> so, they, come on, man. All right, uh, well, the good news is six, no, six can't take a shot. There's, he's got, he doesn't have the angle. So, Captain is going to fire his shell gun. Let me look the rules up for this because I love this shell gun. It is really nasty. The shell gun has a range of 30 and two shots. It's heavy which means minus one if the fire moved. I'm not moving, so I don't get that penalty. It's also um, area. Area says resolve all shots against the initial target. They cannot be spread. Then resolve one bonus shot against every figure within two inches. The lieutenant got lucky because he is definitely outside of two inches, but this guy is my target. I'm gonna, I could have the captain move so that he doesn't have cover. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna move the captain here. He sees him, he's got no cover, so it's a five or higher to hit, but captain is plus two combat. So he needs a three or higher, and he gets two shots. First shot, three or higher. I rolled a natural six. Doesn't mean anything for this one. It just means that I hit that guy. Um, and let's resolve to see if it actually kills this guy so i need a the damage on that weapon on the shell gun is plus zero so i've just got to roll a four or higher and i rolled a two so it missed it did not get through his toughness now he does get a stunned by the way and i think this guy also gets a stunned so he can only do one action he couldn't move but he can he can fire um captain gets a second shot on the same guy so I need a three or higher. I rolled a five, so it hits. Does it get through his armor of four? It does, natural six, so it knocks this guy out. And you know what I didn't do last turn? I did not do morale, but I'm gonna skip it this turn since I forgot, that's my fault. So I took out the second thug. Now the specialist back here, the specialist is, uh, he's got that scattered gun, or rattle gun. I need to see if it hits him. So the same shot would hit on a, his toughness is, he's got no plus combat, so uh, I need a, it hit, so what did I say? Five plus two, three or higher. I rolled a natural six, so it hit. Uh, and I need to get through his toughness of four, and I rolled a two. So he is stunned, uh, which helps me because he can only do one action. He can move or fire. He can't see my captain because of the angle, but he, so he'll have to move if he wants that shot, but he won't be able to take it. Um, that was the captain's turn. Finally, it is my robot's turn. Robot, I'm, I'm going to risk this. He's going to move four to right there. He can see 
the lieutenant through cover, which is a six or higher. Six has plus two combat, so I need to roll a four, a four or higher to hit him. I rolled a one, but he, and he's only got a one shotter, so he missed. All right, so he went, Captain went, and they went. All right, now it is the enemy's turn. Let's go around there. Okay. So this guy's obviously going to shoot at Vey. That's a given. The lieutenant will shoot. He can shoot. He's got three targets, and he's going to obviously pick one that's in the open, which would be Freak or Six. Um, this guy, the, 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 the lieutenant really doesn't have a choice. He, he, he knows he's stunned. I guess he knows he's stunned, but he's got to get a weapon in play. So he'll step out just enough so that if he survives this round, he will shoot at the captain. So he's not going to expose himself because he's stunned. He can't fire this turn, so he'll move just enough to get a target. And that target's in the open, by the way. So I better roll really good initiative. So the two, two enemies that are going to fire are this guy and the lieutenant. All right, let's do this one first because I worry about my vey. Um, he is firing a colony rifle, which I always forget. It Colony rifle just gets one shot. His combat is plus zero. So let's see if he, and he needs a, unfortunately, he needs a three or higher. And he rolls a three. So he hits, he hits Bay. Ugh. That's the problem with moving in too close. The enemy also gets the same advantage. So he hit. Now, Vey's toughness is five. So he's got to roll a, I think you have to beat the toughness, right? Nope, it's equals or exceeds. Okay. Do not roll a five or six. He rolled a one. So uh, he missed. <laughs> his stun go away, goes away because that was his turn. Um, the lieutenant, oh, his stun goes away because he moved. Um, the lieutenant will take a shot at, we've got six and we've got freak. Freak is one, two, three, four, five, six. He's going to fire at six. Six has a combat of plus, a toughness of five. That's going to help. All right, so the lieutenant is firing a marksman's rifle which gets one shot it's a heavy so he didn't move so no no negative modifier this turn he's he needs a five or higher because i'm not in cover but the lieutenant i believe gets plus one combat i i'm 90 percent sure that when you roll up the the enemies it tells you that the uh let's see lieutenant one lieutenant carries a blade and their combat is plus one so he is plus one combat he needs to hit me on a five so he needs a four or higher to hit me he rolled a four now my toughness is five his weapon does not go through that so he needs a five or higher to knock out six he rolled a three so he missed but six is stunned uh also um they is stunned <sighs> all right it is now slow phase it's all or nothing for me so i'm gonna send huala who can move five He's going to charge. Captain says, charging from behind. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, he can get all the way back here. He's got a straight shot at both the lieutenant and the specialist. He's going to shoot at the specialist, who's the closest. Um, Huala is, Huala's got plus one combat and a toughness of four, and he's got a two shooter. So he's going to shoot twice. First shot at the specialist. He gets plus, he's within three, so he needs a three or higher, plus one, he needs a two or higher to hit. I rolled a three, so he hits. His weapon does no additional damage, so toughness of four needs to be beat. And I rolled a five, so he is gone. Um, he's got a second shot. He will fire it at the lieutenant, might as well. Now the lieutenant is in cover, so that is a five again. No, it's more than six inches, so that's six, and he's plus one, so I need a five or higher to hit. And I rolled a three, so I missed. All right, so Huala has gone. Um, let's see, who do I got? I've got six, or uh, Freak. I keep calling him six. I've got Freak, who is going to... Let's see, for, before Freak moves, I'm going to have Red Eyes. Red Eyes is already in cover, so he doesn't have to move. He's going to fire. It is a natural six to hit. But Huala, I mean, Red Eyes is plus one, so he needs a, uh, 
That is a six to hit. He needs a five or higher. He rolls a six and he hits. So, and Red Eyes got, Red Eyes has a two shooter as well. So first shot hits, does it get through his toughness of five? Five or higher to, to knock him out. I rolled a natural six. The Lieutenant is gone. Now here's the problem I have. It is, uh, Huala will move, Huala shot, six will move within range of the center console. I, I think at this point I've got it. It's my turn. I need to roll a single one or two to get Vey a shot. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. I'm missing a die. And he'll lose the stunned. All right. Let's roll. Uh, I, I could do morale. I am going to do morale because here's the problem. If he runs away, I don't get that bonus credit. So he's my priority target. So on a one or two, he. Uh, I'm sorry. Hit their, the, their panic is one to three. <coughs> so a one to three is going to cause him to run. Six, he did not run. All right, good. Now let's see if I get initiative. I did not. I didn't roll a single one or two. So he's gonna get a free shot on Vey, which is what I was worried about. So in the fast phase, I have nobody moving. Enemy phase, he's gotta hit Vey. His combat is plus one because he was the special character so plus one he needs to roll a two or higher to hit me and he rolls a six so he hits does he get through my toughness of five or six he does <laughs> they is down that hurt all right i'm sick of this mess uh it is now the fast phase i'm gonna get everybody moving this direction into cover I'm going to get the captain over here. I'm going to get Freak can move six. So that will get him over here. And uh, there's going to be another uh, morale roll in a set. Well, no, there won't be because uh, it was his turn. Okay, uh, that's it for me. Now I need to see if I get initiative. I only roll five dice this time because Bay is down. <laughs> This time I roll a one, one, two, and a two. So everybody's going to get, everybody's going to get to go. All right, let's do this. Um, Captain. Oh, man. This is really tough. I think he's going to, he's going to run. I do think he's going to run. So Captain's going to just move around. He'll go, he's going to get a penalty this turn, but that's okay. I'm going to move where I can see him. I'm within six inches, so I need a three or higher to hit, and the captain is plus two combat, so he's gonna hit. He's gonna hit him. He hits. First shot. Does it get through his toughness of four? It does not. Second shot. Does it hit? Yes, it does. Does it get through his toughness of four, five, or six? It does. He is out. So, they gather the wounded, they gather around the center point. It's probably a terminal they have to hack or something. They do their job on it and they successfully complete the mission. The downside is they is down. Now the good news is I have four story points. So I can burn one of those in the post battle roll. I'm gonna do the post battle rolls in just a few minutes after I take a break, but before I go, I wanna see what happens to Bay. Let's just check it out. So I'm gonna jump ahead to determine injuries and recovery. Does he have a luck point? He does not. So injury table is on page 122. You roll a D100. I have a green which is high and a yellow which is low. I am going to roll, roll high, come on. 98, I think I'm okay. A 98 is School of Hard Knocks, earn one XP. So Vey got knocked on his rear end and what does he get for it? He gets plus one XP to Vey for, I guess, surviving the thing. All right, that was fun. I, I was a bit nervous about that because they, 
all had those high toughnesses and also that line of sight with visibility out only to 11 inches. As you can see, it required me to get in close. When you get in close to your enemy, they are also in close to you as they learned the hard way. But fortunately, these guys were not all that brave. They wanted to stay in cover. They, uh, I, I didn't do any morale rolls. I could have. I should have done some morale rolls. Actually, I did one and he, and he made it. But earlier when two went out, I could have done two morale rolls right there and possibly taken uh, it up to two additional characters out of the game. <clears throat> but anyway, it is what it is, and they survived. So I'm going to take a quick break, get something to drink, and I'll be back in just a minute. <coughs> Excuse me, my throat. Be back in just a minute to do the post-game rolls. Okay, time to do the post-game rolls. And just so you know, they start on page 119. So as a reminder, in case you haven't followed in some of my previous videos, what I do is I will update my uh, crew roster and I always make this available as a PDF download uh, with the video so you'll find the link in the video description and you'll be able to follow along so page 119 this is the post turn 8 battle rolls okay let's start resolve a rival status if you fought an opponent that isn't a rival and held the field roll a d6 on a 1 the type of opponent you just fought becomes your rivals, and you should be no and should be noted. So, uh, yeah, I held the field, and these were salvage team. So I rolled a five. So they do not become a, a rival. Salvage, not a rival. I already have a rival on this planet. I don't need another one. Resolve the patron status. Now, I did pick a patron. If you succeeded in a patron mission, you may add the patron to your list of contacts on this planet. Unless it was a one-time contract. It didn't say it was a one-time contract. So, I do have a second patron on this planet. This is um, uh, this is Bison 6, I believe, that I'm on. So, I've got two patrons now. And somebody corrected me in the last video in a comment. When you have... A current patron on a planet it doesn't mean you automatically get a free job to choose from what it does is it adds to the role when you roll to see if a um, if you get a, if you when you do a find a new patron if you have an existing one it helps with that role like I guess word of mouth like a, a patron would say yeah they're good guys you should hire them so I'll remember that on the next time so uh, I did so the patron becomes a patron only on this planet Unless you roll somewhere that says they become persistent, it means you can access them or you, you can use their influence on any planet you happen to be on. So let's determine the quest progress. This was not part of a quest. I did not fight that. So this is not applicable. Get paid. All right. So it says you get paid 1d6 credits in pay, loot, bounty, salvage. If you finish... Okay. Add plus one on easy. If you won the mission by completing your objective, which I did, treat a roll of one or two as a three. Rival missions do not get this bonus. If you did a patron job, add the pay bonus to the danger pay. Okay, so this particular one, I can't remember. I did choose, it had one credit of danger pay and an extra loot table roll, and that was it. Oh, it had that one plus one credit for the priority target. So I've got two credits automatically, and I'm going to add five. So I get plus seven credits. So it was five. Hazard pay is six. Random, or the extra priority makes it seven. That's right. Okay. Um, battlefield finds. If you held the field, which I did, you get to do a battlefield find. Let's roll the D100. Can you see this? Yeah. Roll the D100. Uh, 36. 36 is Starship Parts, redeemable as equivalent to two credits only when installing a Starship component. See page 60. I haven't done that yet. Maybe I should look into that. Starship Part, page 60. I'll look at that. Redeemable as value of two credits. Okay. Value of two credits. Doesn't get added to my total credits. All right, I'll take that. Check for invasion. Uh, this was not an invasion threat, so that is not a risk. 
listed in their battle chain. You must roll to see if this roll. I gotta look in, into that because it's like none of the planet. I, I think maybe when you roll an initial planet thing or when you moved planets, there's a chance it may become an invasion. Maybe that's it. I haven't changed planets in so long, but guess what? I'm doing it this time. I'm leaving Bison. Although I think to do so, I may have to fight a rival battle. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, check for invasion. I don't have to do that. Seven, gather the loot. Roll once on the loot table, but I get an extra loot table because of my patron. So loot table is on page 131. So I get roll one and roll two. Roll number one on the loot table is 15, which is a weapon. Roll number two on the loot table is 68, which is odds and ends okay <clears throat> let's do the weapon first weapon you, there's a sub uh, this is on page 131 i rolled a 32 which is a slug weapon and then you turn to the slug weapons which is on the same page and i rolled a 27 which is dueling pistols i don't know if i want those Dueling pistols, range of eight, one shot, pistol, critical. It says pistols. No, it doesn't. It says dueling pistol. Sorry. I thought I got two. I only get one pistol, and I don't really ever want to get within eight inches with a single shot weapon. Sorry. It does have the critical, so if you roll a six, it counts as two hits, but eh, no thanks. Let's do the odds and ends. That is on page... 133 and I rolled a 74 which is a ship item like I need any more of those by the way I paid off my ship my ship is paid off I don't have to pay on that loan anymore ship item let's see what a ship item is ship item on page 134 I rolled a 55 which is mark 2 translator I have no idea Sounds valuable. Uh, let's go check that out. Just, you know, for fun. Let's see Let's see what a Mark II translator is. Mark II translator. When rolling to recruit, you may roll an additional D6. That's awesome. But I'm at a full complement of crew. I'm not going to be recruiting. So I'm going to sell that, and I'm going to sell my dueling pistol, pistols when it comes time for two extra credits. All right, let's keep going. Um, what next? I am at number... I did seven. Number eight was injuries, and it was plus one XP to Ve for taking that point-blank shot and then getting up and walking it off. Uh, number nine XP. Here we go. Uh, Ve became a casualty, so he gets another plus one for becoming a casualty survived but did not win i did win does that mean every each character of just if they become if they did not become a casualty characters survived if they did not become a casualty so he did not survive because he became a casualty so everybody else gets plus two to all for survival uh survived in one is plus three Sorry, so they all get plus three. First character to inflict a casualty was Vey, so plus one for first kill. So Vey still gets plus three XP this turn, he just gets it in a different way. Uh, killed a unique individual, no. Campaign on easy, no. Crew completed final stage of a quest, no. So that's wild. So everybody got plus three XP to all. Um. I'll look at ability increases later and I will make a note on the character sheet anytime I use my XP to buy an upgrade for a character. Invest in advanced training? Nope, I don't have enough money. Although right now I have, what, seven? I'm gonna sell these two, that gives it to nine. And it says you may sell up to three undamaged items earning on credits. So I'm at plus nine credits because I sold these items. Nine plus 10, I have 19 credits so far. Maybe I could do some advanced training, but not really. Uh, purchase items. Okay, here we go. 
you may pay three credits to receive a roll on the military weapon table, gear table, or gadget table in the carrier. So I'm going to buy a military weapon. I'm going to pay three, minus three. It says you may purchase more than one roll per campaign turn. So let's see what I got. Uh, page 28. I'm, pi I'm buying on the military weapon. That's really cool. So roll a d100. That is a 33. An infantry laser. I don't have one of those. Let's see what it is. Infantry laser. A range of 30. One shot, but it has what's called snapshot, which, let's see what that does. That sounds cool. Snapshot is, where's the weapons? Snapshot. You get plus one to hit when you're within six inches. Not bad. Infantry laser has a range of 30, and it's got plus one when it's within six. Now, the, the unfortunate part for the infantry laser is it's one shot, but it does have a nice range of 30. So I'm not selling that. Now I'm down to 16 credits. Do I want to buy another chance? Um, you know what? I do. I'm gonna spend. I, I I'm gonna buy another roll on it, and this will be my last one. I'm gambling now. 88, a boarding saber. Seriously, it's for brawl only. I'm not. I'm gonna use a. I'm gonna use a story point, and say that the captain goes, no, 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 not that. I, I'm asking about that item. What is that? That is a 87 which is a second boarding saber. Golly, okay. Which I guess I'll give the captain. Every captain should have a saber, right? Why not? Man, what a waste of a story point and three credits. Okay, um, let's see. I did the purchase items. Uh, roll for a campaign event. Roll a D100 for a campaign event. 69. 69 is during routine maintenance, the gravitational adjuster got knocked out of alignment. Your ship suffers 1d6 hull point damage. Well, I'm at 35, full health, so a d6, I take one point of damage. <laughs> I'm down to 34. One point of damage. Well, my engineer's good. He says, Cap, I got that. Minus one whole point damage. All right. And now you roll for a character event. You roll for a random, non-bot, non soulless and roll a D100. Well, uh, I have eight characters, and they're numbered on here, and the robot does not count. So that's, that's not very fair. I'll, no, I'll skip him and go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'll roll a d10 and I'll roll I'll reroll eights and ten, eight through ten. So I rolled a three, which is Vey. This affects Vey. Campaign event, or or no character event. I rolled a 63 on the character event. You get hurt while working on the ship. Spend one campaign turn in sick bay, and the ship takes another hull point damage. Wow. All right, so Vey is out for one turn. The good news is I think I can get him out of that because I have some insurance, which allows me to bump. Uh, t each time I, I burn an insurance, I can take off a turn. I'll check on that and see. All right, that is the end of the post rolls. I will append this to the end of the battle video. And then the next video in this series, I will be doing the pre-rolls for turn number nine to see what my crew uh, is, or who my crew is going to face next. Thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this. I do hope you're giving Five Parsecs From Home a try, or I hope maybe this, this series of videos has convinced you to give it a try. It's a great solo game. I love solo war games with miniatures. This is just one of many I play, but this is definitely one of my favorites. So if you have any questions about it, post them in the comments. I'll do my best to uh, respond. And uh, join me in the next video where I'll do the pre-rolls. Until then, everybody, take care.